Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet. Welcome to the Lit Roundtable. My name is Anna. And I'm Joseph. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors in today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. And today is an exciting day. We are going to be going over our favorite villains. Yeah. But before then, uh, just as some, you know, the usual business, we're going to go over what we're watching or reading right now. So, Anna, I'll let you start us off. What are you watching and what are you reading? Okay. Well, so last time we did this part, I feel like I very quickly like listed off 10 different books that I'm reading <laughs> because I tend to read a lot of books at a time. Um, but I do have some specific things I wanted to shout out this week. So last night I watched The Fellowship of the Ring, the extended edition, for the first time in a long time. Um, and so good and, uh, still get very emotional at the end. (laughs) I get emotional in the beginning. I mean, I get emotional in the beginning too, but, um, like once they leave Lothlorien and I could like feel myself like getting worked up because I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's going to happen soon. They're going to have the big, the big fight at Aemon Hen and Boromir's going to die and Frodo's going to leave and Sam's going to follow him. (laughs) You're just getting yourself all psyched out. (laughs) And then it all happened and I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a great movie and this is such a great book and I just want to read the books again even though I have so many books that I have not read yet and I don't need to read The Lord of the Rings again right now, but it may happen. But I'm really trying to, like, not do that because I do have a lot of other things to read. But So if you haven't watched The Lord of the Rings movies in a long time, 10 out of 10 would recommend. The extended edition. Yes, but they hold up is my point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like... I don't feel like, like someone said to me once that they felt like the graphics were kind of outdated and I was like watching it and I was like, I don't think so. Like I am not, I'm not seeing like glaring CGI, at least in Lord of the Rings. The the Hobbit movies, I do, it feels more glaring to me, even though it's newer. Um, It's more distracting to me in The Hobbit, I guess. But I don't get that in Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. It's just very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've watched recently. Um, but as far as books goes, um, I still have a long list of things that I'm reading, but, um, I have been listening to the Jane Austen books on Audible, um, like while I'm working and doing things that allow me to multitask with listening to something. Um, and I just listened to Mansfield Park last week which I had never read. Like, I think I've seen parts of one of the movies of that, but I'm not familiar enough with it to, like, recognize it, I guess. Yeah, I've never seen or... Yeah. I've never Um, seen anything about that. I've never even heard of that one. It's fairly short. I listened to it in a day. Oh. Um, And it is so good. I think it's one of my new favorite Jane Austens. And I am a Pride and Prejudice fan. (laughs) Um, but it was so good. And Fanny Price, who's the heroine of the story, is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And she calls out all the baloney that her society is putting on her. Like, she's just expected to fall in love with this man because he proclaimed that he loved her. Even though she's been watching him be kind of a sleaze to all these other girls that are her relations and just because she he deigned to have feelings for her she's supposed to automatically love him back and she's like no i'm not doing that and she calls it out like she tells somebody no 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 it's not my job to love him just because he's decided that he loves me and when did when did she write this book oh like Mm, you're well, I guess not. You I don't should have to, know. You don't have to give me like I an don't exact year, but like, what grab, was her? Grab that copy of. That's far away, and I have headphones plugged <laughs> in. No. Okay, I don't know what the I don't know what publication date is. I think it's eighteen hundreds. But um, I was gonna say she. I mean, that's yeah. that's a really. Uh, I should know. For like just the subject that you're talking about is it's very... the same era. She lived in the same era that the books are. No, I know, but I mean, so, like the whole Regency idea of era. not not just. Uh, going along with what the guy wants to do just because he confessed his love to you you're expected to right. just fall in line yeah. which as far as like the culture of the time mm-hmm. i'm just saying that's a very uh bold thing to write about yes. probably well and it turns out that he was a total scumbag and like 
made this other lady elope with him who was married. Like, he took a married woman. Wow. <laughs> and ran away. And it was like, yeah. Home record. No, he's, like, not a good guy. But everyone just wanted her to love him because of the connections and whatever. Mm, the social <laughs> status that would come along yes. with it. So, Fanny Price, new favorite. And I love Elizabeth Bennett, but Fanny Price is pretty great. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, and today I started listening to Emma, which, another great book. I also enjoy very much. But, anyway. So, I'm, I'm kind of going through a classics period right now. Because I just finished a YA series that I can't decide if I want to talk about or not. And I needed a palate cleanse, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. Because I was irritated so I, I needed a something that would cleanse the palate but also provide that kind of happy ending that i wanted in a book and jane austen was the perfect way hmm. to get that so yeah very cool yeah so that's that's where my books and tv time has been what about you well it's been a little slower um, just because it's been kind of busy lately. But sure. um, we are still playing um, the One Ring RPG. So oh, I've yeah. been doing uh, prep for that a lot. We right. finished our first adventure. Yeah, you have to do a lot more work on that than I do as a player. That is true. Yeah. Someday I'll play an RPG where I get to be a player. <laughs> well, maybe one of these I'll, I'll take over the lore master role for you. That's true. That could happen. Not right now, but maybe. No. <laughs> Um, I like being lore master. It's fine. I do enjoy it. Um, I know. I just want you to have the opportunity to be a character at some point. Um, but that's been really fun. I'm enjoying all the characters that are kind of developing more and everyone's kind of quirks and, um, like the rapport that's starting to build and all that. That's always fun to see. And, uh, as far as books, I am, well, we're reading the, uh, Lies of Locke Lamora which is the first book in the Gentleman Bastard series, which has kind of made Wheel of Time go on the back burner a little bit. Um, but I'm still going to be chugging along through that here. Um, and as far as movies and TV shows, we are still meeting up on Friday nights for our what has kind of turned into anime night. And, and WandaVision. And WandaVision. <laughs> that's true. Because that's, still, that's also podcast, on Fridays. But... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, by the time this comes out, I think that show will be done. It will be done. But yeah. uh, as of as of this recording, um, WandaVision has one episode left, and I am so excited. Yeah. Um, that show really leaves you wanting the next episode to come out right away. I know. I'm bummed that we only have one left. Yeah, you can't just binge the whole thing at once. No. Which is sad. But uh, yep, WandaVision and My Hero Academia is the anime we're watching. Uh, we are. About to finish up the sports festival arc, so you got to see um, Midoriya versus Todoroki, which is um, the main character who has basically kind of a version of super strength versus someone who can control ice and fire. And that was a really... And there's, like, you know, things happening below the surface of, like, the character's psyches with, like, uh, daddy issues and, like... Yeah, basically. (laughs) There's a lot of daddy issues in that show. (laughs) But... It's very good, and I'm. It's fun watching. It's fun watching you watch the show. <laughs> well, yeah, because there like are parts where I'm like, time. "Oh my gosh, this this is gonna happen. They're they're gonna win." And then it's like, "Oh wait, no, no, yeah. oh no." Uh-huh. And then because I, I like I watch anime like some dudes watch football. And uh-huh. I throw my arms up in the air because I'm so excited, and then I just have to slowly let them drop because. Didn't exactly it's a total go. psych out. Yeah, didn't exactly go the way you were expecting. <laughs> right. Um, nothing really new in video games. Um, I'm still, well, actually I did start playing, it is Legend of Zelda, it's Hyrule Warriors, which is like kind of a prequel to Breath of the Wild, but it's like a different kind of franchise, like it's a different style of game. It's, it's really fun so far, and it's kind of interesting to see the characters before the Breath of the Wild game and the new stuff that they're throwing in and all that, um... But I just started that, so I haven't gotten too far along, so I can't really say anything else as far as, like, how I'm liking it. But I like it so far. Sure. I'm, like, maybe an hour or two in, but it's fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I've been up to. So next we'll just kind of dive into the book we're reading together. 
Yeah. The Lies of Lac La Morda. Actually, before we do that, I do want to have, I do want to cover one, two more housekeeping things. You stole my thunder. Oh. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I don't think so. I don't think these are on your list of things to talk about. Oh, okay. Um, let me get to my, can you hear my paper? I'm a paper person. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we did get a comment and a review on Apple Podcasts. Right. From Beamer Baby 83 and it's a gem. And Jordan, I love you. Thank you for commenting and for liking our podcast. <laughs> um, it's and a buddy of yours. Yes, she's a buddy of mine. So my, um, so I just wanted to let people know that wherever you're listening or watching, um, the more you interact with it, the more it will help us to get more traction to people that we don't know. Um, we still appreciate all the like love and support that we're getting in person when people are like, oh my gosh. I love your podcast. Like, that's amazing. Um, and it's just, like, really fun to mm -hmm. hear what people are thinking of what we're doing. Um, yeah. But the more you interact with the stuff online, like, the more that will help. So, like and comment. All, all that, that good jazz. Stuff. Yeah. So, not that I want to, like, ask you to do stuff like that, but... No, no, this is the shameless YouTube plug part. This is the part where you say... <laughs> Not even just YouTube, Smash but, like, that even on bell. Apple Podcasts, like, the more you interact with it, the more that it'll, like, show up in people's searches when they're looking for this type of content. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, even, like, even just giving it, like, a five-star on the episode or on the podcast page, wherever you're listening, will be mm -hmm. super helpful. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I also want to mention that you will have noticed... Um, the last few episodes have had some killer music. Um, and I am so excited that a friend of ours, Dan, has put together some music for us to use as intro and outro music. Um, and he didn't want us to give him any promotion, but I just want to say thank you publicly because it's amazing and we love it. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool. I really enjoyed, uh, kind of collaborating with him on that and it, I think it sounds awesome. So yeah. 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 And the last thing, the artwork on the podcast, like the um, banner and the logo um, was put together by a friend of mine from college, Chris, and she is an illustrator for children's books So, um, and some other projects, but her name is Chris Eastler, and you should look her up, and she's amazing. So that's all. I just wanted to give them some, like, yeah. kudos, because I so appreciate the work they, they did for it. us. They um, deserve it. Yes. Okay, cool. so now, now we get to talk about the next section of the Lies of Lacamora, which yeah, was very fun. Which is chapters two through three yes. is what we're going to be talking about. So if you're reading along and you haven't gotten this far yet, uh, skip ahead. I don't know what the timestamp will be for that, but just skip ahead until we're not talking about this anymore. And then we'll... <laughs> we'll try to have like a, a clear like transition so that you can like yeah, you'll be able to tell for it. But uh, yeah, uh, if you haven't read this far, um, just either pause and go read it and then come back or skip ahead, whatever you want to do. But yeah, chapters two through three is what we're talking about. And I am really enjoying where this is taking us. But yeah. I'll let you kind of start off with a discussion on this. Sure. So um, chapter two, um, second touch at the teeth show, um, was basically takes place on this barge. Um, with this like live entertainment happening on yeah. the river or but it's like, something. It's like a collection of barges that all like join together. It's like yeah. this bizarre, it's like, it's kind of like, it reminds me of like Venice or something where like there's just yes. river boats everywhere and like it's a very nautical kind of society, yes. which yes. I'm digging the vibes. Um, and the biggest thing I got from this was like the metaphor that was happening, like as um, Scott Lynch was describing the... Um, Scott Lynch is the author. As he was describing what's happening with the, like, water theatrics um, and the silk dancers mm -hmm. and how that related to what was happening on the pleasure barge with Jean and Locke and the um, Salveras. Like, it's a very interesting dynamic because you could see, like, it was the same kind of, like, dance going back and forth between the two different things that were happening. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very artfully described um and talked about in the book so yeah like you have to pay attention to what they're describing in the background because it will tell you like it will inform you on what's happening with the characters that you're mm -hmm. like invested in which is very cool 
there's for example there's there's a part where and he's been really good at kind of descriptions for some of these mythical creatures that Mm -hmm. are extra terrifying for me because i hate the ocean (laughs) right and so like a disgusting tentacly squid monster that's all teeth Mm -hmm. like eating these uh like convicted murderers um was a a freaky thought being one of them but also it was kind of a you know it was a metaphor for how um they're pulling off this con and they're that monster that's about to eat the right and then and then when it does although yeah i'll be curious to see where the story goes because at the end of that it it describes how the the people in charge ended up killing the uh the monster Monster anyway Mm -hmm. after it was done eating these convicted murderers so if if that monster (laughs) is supposed to represent the crew the gentleman bastards then it's We'll see what happens at the end of this book. I don't know. Well, Is even going into the next chapter, I was like... <gasps> I know. Yeah, let's, let's move on to that. So the next well, chapter... Well, hold on. Before we do that, I just want to say, like, the part that you were talking about, I have a note that just says chef's kiss. Oh, to yeah. To the metaphor of, uh, <laughs> of all Eat that. Of that. Up. Um, Metaphors for days. Also, this book is making me wish I had more of an appreciation for brandy. Because that's, like, the liquor that they're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah. They're really good at making brandy sound delicious, even though I've tried it, and, and I'm not a brandy person. I am not either. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it, I think, over Christmas, even, because I think Mom and Dad had some from Grandma and Grandpa, yeah. and I tried a sip of it and was like, I can't drink this. Yeah. It's, and yeah. who know? I have no idea if that was, like, brandy that was any good or how old it was. That could have like, been trash brandy. It could have been. I have no idea. But it was just like, ugh. So reading this like oh i wish i actually enjoyed that and yeah. it wasn't like nasty yeah <laughs> <laughs> we also learned so at the end of each chapter there's like Locke's interlude which takes us back in time to like mm-hmm. shortly after the prologue happened mm-hmm. so we get to hear more about Locke growing up um because he's an adult in like the proper chapters now um but we basically learn in that interlude that um he's going to be well educated basically yeah um, he's as gonna, part of chain's gang he's gonna so. learn quote everything yeah yeah which is exciting yeah um okay so then we get into chapter three which is called imaginary men and that chapter starts with you think someone figuring out their whole plan and telling the don about it yeah so when they when they were on those barges, basically the main character Locke Lamore is pretending to be someone else and he's just trying to con these guys mm-hmm. in this in this long con of thinking that he's like this wealthy merchant from another country and they're gonna do all this stuff together and, and they then, have to move this brandy very quickly and very secretly, but they need funds to do it yeah, this very expensive rare brandy and then the next chapter it's like it starts off with the secret police showing up in the mark for the con's study. And telling him, like, you're about to be conned. And, like, you're about to be conned by the the best thief in the city that we've been trying to catch for yeah. years. And we have not been able to catch him. And he's about to get you. And we need your cooperation so we can catch him. And it li- they list all these other Dons and Donnas that have lost large sums of money to this thief. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're like, oh my gosh. Locke's been had. Like, they're going to get it. I know I was totally expecting the (laughs) dynamic of this book to go in a totally different direction of like, okay, so now it's going to be this weird game of like, they know they're being conned, but Locke doesn't know that they know. So he's going to try to keep going with the plan. And then he's going to have to try to wait to like wiggle his way out of it and still get the money, Mm -hmm. even though they know. But then it gets completely flipped on its head. Because the book is still implementing, um... That you that the timeline is all out of whack. So like you read things out of order on purpose. So then it cuts to a scene where like Locke and the gang are eating supper and like bragging about how everything's going and they're gonna be the richest gang in town and blah blah blah. Which again, I'll just chime in to say again, the the thing that I love the most about this book so far is the rapport between the characters and the gang. Yes. And I love the way Scott Lynch has done character interaction like that. And you yes. can, it's like, you can just tell these characters have been with each other and through thick and thin through like all kinds of things. And mm-hmm. like the character interaction, the dialogue, the rapport is all just superb. Like yeah. it is my favorite thing so far about this book. And you get a huge glimpse into that during that specific scene during dinner. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. And then, 
And then, like, it goes back to the secret police with the Dawn, and then it goes back to your favorite characters, and I guess I'm assuming that, because, I mean, your favorite characters are these gang of thieves, so, like, they're the bad yeah. guys. <laughs> but, but they're kind of like Robin Hood. They but they're kind of the like rich Robin and, Hood. Yeah. Except they're not giving anything to the poor. They're just Yeah, they're it. kind of in it just to get rich. Yeah. But, um, but then they start talking about the next part of their plan, and you're like, oh my gosh, the next part of their plan is to pretend to be the secret police. And they start getting dressed up, and, like, as it's, like, described how Locke is getting into his disguise, you're like, oh my gosh, that sounds just like the guy that was in the dog's yeah, house. Yeah. And then you're like, oh my gosh, it was Locke the whole time. Like, yeah. it's so cool. It's so artfully done. Because I, he goes out of his way to describe a scar that goes across the yeah. guy's face, the secret police guy. And then as, as Locke's preparing his disguise for the next part of their plan, mm-hmm. uh, is it Jean or yeah. Jean, whoever? Oh. I don't know the pronunciation. J E A N. I'm going to say Jean, but it's probably Jean. Because well, I, cause I feel yeah. like there's very, like, French-Spanish influence. Yeah. Because Donna and Donna, I think, is Spanish. Mm, yeah. So maybe this is supposed to be, like, Madrid. I don't know. Mm. Or, I don't know. We're, <laughs> we're from Nebraska. We're su- yeah. America. <laughs> but, uh, but no, and then it, Jean's like what do you want? Like a scar across the face? He's like, yeah, a scar I'll do. And like, and they start putting this fake scar on his face. And that's when I knew I was like, oh man, yeah, he's the secret police guy. Yeah. That was them the whole time. Yeah. Oh ye of little faith. I can't believe I, I fell for it. Scott Lynch. Good job. I mean, it's so, it's so well done. And the description of this, the, it's like theater makeup. Cause they're, they talk about like becoming these characters. Yeah. So I think if you're someone um, like if you're, I don't know, if you're not reading along with us, I don't know if you're listening to us talk about this part of it, but except I know that Leanne probably is. Shout Leanne, out to Leanne. Leanne's wonderful. On his college roommate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and she puts up with us talking about all kinds of stuff anyway that she is not familiar with and she still listens and enjoys it. So thank you. <laughs> Our first fan. Yes. Leanne. <laughs> Indeed. Um, but she, so anyway, if you're into any kind of theater um, and like character development, I think you'll really enjoy this book mm-hmm. because the way that they develop the characters that they're like slipping into to down to like the voice that they use for the yeah. different people, like the voices are totally different because they have to be convincing. Right. right. Well, I mean, think about it. Locke has been on the barge all day with Don Silvara and that is it that night or the next day. I think it's that night. He goes back dressed as somebody else using a different voice, and it's so compelling that the Don has no idea. To be fair, I think he might be wearing a mask when he's the secret police, like some kind of, like He a, had, like, a, no, he had a, he had, like, a scarf over his face, like, over his mouth, but he took it off. Oh, right. Because then he had the mustache and the scar and everything. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, so he, he was able to hang out with someone, like, all afternoon, and then come visit them dressed as someone else that night mm-hmm. and convince them that they were a different person. Like, yeah, it's very... Very cool. It's very cool stuff. Yeah. And the, the characterization, like, the character development of the of the actual gang, like, when you were talking about the rapport, even when there aren't dialogue tags to tell you exactly who's talking, you know which character is talking. Because mm-hmm. the way they talk is so, like, well-developed that it's obvious. Yeah. Which is a hard thing to accomplish, I think. Mm-hmm. So, it it's really fun. It's a really fun book. I'm really, I'm, I'm... I'm really enjoying it so far. I know, me too. And it is not like I like fantasy, but this is not it's not your the typical vein genre. of fantasy that I normally read. Yeah. Um it's like it's, a it's like a heist book too, which I yeah. wasn't expecting it to be a heist book. Right. But it totally makes sense. It's a heist book about thieves in like this this kind of nautical I don't know, we'll just say Mediterranean setting. Yeah. Um and and there's still like fantasy elements of like the like the city was built by an ancient race that we don't know of and it's there's like this elder glass that glows after the sun goes down for a certain amount of time and like all this stuff yeah the false the false the false light oh you know? yeah That's yeah yeah is. okay yeah joseph's <laughs> explaining because you know. i just made a face at him like what are you talking about? I'm up to date more like I'm at the same place as you, but what are you talking about? Well, um, I actually read. No, I'm just <laughs> I mean, I technically I read the prologue twice because I listened to it and then That's I read true. it. That's true. Um <laughs> but I kid. 
Um, but yeah, so it's the world building has been really good. The uh, like, there's still some, some stuff about like interactions with other countries and like worldly politics that I don't understand, but I'm thinking right. that it'll be kind of fleshed out As eventually. Yeah, um, and there's like this ever absent person that they keep mentioning that I'm like, when is she going to show up? Because I, I think it's going to rock the boat and I'm excited. I think so. Here's the thing. There was a shadowy figure running around on the rooftops in the first chapter. You're right. But I thought that was Locke, but maybe it wasn't. No, Locke was getting choked out. Oh, you're right. It was yeah. happening at the same time. You sure it yeah. wasn't Bug? No, because no, Bug was, Bug had was. like thrown himself hmm. off the building. I think that was her. I think that she's like, Keeping tabs. On I them. think she's scoping things out, and she's gonna, or maybe she's the one that's orchestrating the secret police people. Maybe she's gone, quote good. Maybe she works for the Duke now. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of different directions this can go, and I'm super pumped. <laughs> yeah, and I can't. I can't even tell you what her character name is because they it only they've only S. mentioned her like twice, very Sal, briefly. Salbeth or something. Something like that. But I also think that she is a former love interest of Locke's. I, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of confirmed. Pretty, yeah, pretty clear. Um, so <laughs> that'll be interesting. Because he's moping about her. And... Yeah. But I will also say I'm also really enjoying... Um, so, the, like, the big... The guy that kind of runs this criminal empire. The Like, the, the main... The big head the honcho? The big guy. The duke is what they call him. No, that's that's the ruler of the, the city. Kamor. The duke. The duke of... But no, I mean, No, like, it, the duke Basavari. That's no, who... It, it's... You heard me set my pen down, people. This means serious business. I'm getting my book out. Um, because in the interlude, Kappa Basavar Barsavi. Kappa. Kappa Barsavi. But He's the Kappa. I think the Duke is the person that rules the city. I think they're the same person, dude. Because in this interlude, Chains takes Locke to meet Kappa Barsavi. Because it's a duchy. Kamor is a duchy. Right. So. Right. And it's the Duke's agents, which are the people of the. The secret police work for the Duke, which is like the legal, like the, the people that are actually like the law enforcement. Right. But the Kappa Barsavi is the criminal, the underworld overlord guy. See, my understanding is that it's all just very corrupt, and the Kappa Barsavi is the Duke, I and don't, that's why... Um, I don't think that's right, but... That's why they had to buy the the death token from him, so that they can, they're can they allowed to kill Locke, and the police aren't going to ask questions. Well, because that's the whole, the whole, the secret uh, piece thing, is between the the duke and his and his lawmakers and the law enforcement the, the yellow jackets and barsavi with the all the different gangs that he runs that's the secret piece or truce or whatever they call it okay well next chapter is all about the next chapter or the, is called at the court of kappa barsavi so i think yeah. these answers will be answered in the next podcast we will see <laughs> but I was just going to say, regardless of that, that's just a little tangent. Of, but um, of one of us not understanding. Probably me. <laughs> we, we will see. We will see who's right. But um, the Kappa has a daughter who... Oh, yes. <laughs> who was really... She was, like, really proud of these spiky boots that she had. Yes. And he was like, if you kick another one of my guys, you're going to be wearing reed sandals for the next three months. And I was like, this yeah. is hilarious. I, she this, was... This little six-year-old girl wearing spiky boots, yeah. and she's like this big gangster's daughter. Like, yeah. I just loved, I really liked her character, that, that was too. great. I hope she comes back. Oh, you know she is. So, um, yeah. She's not the same girl, because she's not, this, she's not the one we were just talking about. No, no, no. That's missing. This is, this is a girl that's not missing, and I think no. my prediction is that eventually in the book we will see Kappa actually bite the dust and then she will take over and be the new one mm -hmm. that's my i think kappa is a title like dawn yeah yeah which means he's not the duke unless anyway. kappa means duke <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm just i'm just I'm, trying to troll you now i know you are but i'm pretty but... sure it's like synonymous because i remember thinking while i was reading like wait 
how is this guy related to the Duke? And then I was like, oh, I think this is the Duke. But we'll, well, I'm sure we'll find out in the next chapter. We will see. Because it'll be all about him. Okay. So. So that's kind of where it left off, though, with uh, that interlude where they went to meet with uh, the Kappa, and he swore his allegiance to him and his daughter. Um, Anna's pen clicking. She's, like, making well, a note hear. of it. She's <laughs> like, all right, who is the Duke, and who is the... Uh-huh. Who will be made the fool? On the next episode of Lit Roundtable, yes. are the the are, who is the wise and who is the not so wise mentor? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we will see. It's part of our intro every time. Yeah, yeah, I know. It could be me. <laughs> could, I could be the dumb dumb. It's both of us. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Depending on the topic, it's both of us. Yeah. Anyway, so we are going to now dive into our favorite villains. Yes. Now, for this, there are... So, villains are trickier than good guys because for a lot of different movies and franchises, there's only one or two. And so, mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to say who's your like who's your favorite villain in Avatar The Last Airbender because there's, like, two. Right. There's, like, Azula and Ozai. But, and I mean, mm-hmm. there are some other ones, too. But, I mean... I know, but I was just trying to think, who would I pick on that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know between those two, which one I would Combustion pick. Man, Exploding yeah. Forehead. Um, <laughs> right. That's an only only a thing that Avatar people will understand, and that's yeah. okay. Moving on. So there, we're gonna go through some big franchises that have multiple villains that we can actually kind of go through and pick a favorite villain from the franchise, and then after that, we are going to construct. Well, both of us will construct our own personal villainous Mount Rushmores, where uh, you know if you could pick four villains to be on a Mount Rushmore type monument dedicated to their scum and villainy. What who would make it onto the villainous Mount Rushmore? I don't want to admit how much time I have spent thinking about <laughs> my villainous Mount Rushmore because I'm ha- I've had a hard time with it because I haven't decided if it's villains that I love to hate or like what is the criteria that puts them on the Mount Rushmore? That's Are all the up ones to you, that man. I just like despise and can't, could not wait for them to die and not be part of the story anymore. I don't think, I, you know, like that. those are the questions that I went through in my head. But I think we're going to go through our by franchise first, right? Yes, So hopefully that's correct. that discussion will help me sort out. I technically have a list of eight, but you can only have four on Mount Rushmore. So That is correct. Um, hopefully we'll narrow it down a little bit. We'll see. <laughs> for me. <laughs> so the first franchise we are going don't to start with... Don't say Star Wars. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to start with Star Wars. Is Disney, Ooh. which owns Star Wars. <laughs> okay, but it, we're excluding Star Wars. We're talking we are, like we Disney classic movies. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I would say. Which this is one mm. that I just added to the, to the list before we started recording, so I haven't even had a chance to think about this one. Um, oh, shoot. I was going to tell you to go first. But I can probably think of someone. Okay. Um, hmm. So are we going to go any Disney, or does it have to be like Disney Princess? Because I think, I think can for go good any... guys we did Disney Princess, but I think we can just do any classic. Yeah. Disney. I'm curious what you're thinking. That's not a Disney Princess movie. Like like Pixar, which is kind of oh, owned that's by Disney. Not Disney, but, but but it is now. So okay, fine. Like can Are I say pick... Zerg? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were gonna say Sid. <laughs> we were in the Sid. Oh gosh. We were in Toy Story. I mean, Sid is um, by far worse. I actually but... thought about Zerg for my Mount Rushmore. Are you serious? But not That's really. So cool. It was like more of a that would be funny because Emperor Zerg. Yeah. You put Zerg on and not Darth Vader. Well, that's kind of what I was thinking. That'd be because hilarious. Because Zerg is basically Darth Vader. Exactly. But but no, I Zerg is only in Toy Story 2 and like yeah, I don't And that Buzz Lightyear show. That's there true. There was a Buzz He's Lightyear Buzz show, Lightyear, right? The animated I didn't show. just imagine that. Okay. What was that? Uh it was like to infinity something and the command something? um Starf, not Starfleet. That's Star Trek. I know, I know. I know. And I started to say it. It was wrong. I don't know. I don't remember. Even though uh, Buzz talks to them all the time. It could have been a uh, fever dream. No, it wasn't. no, that's a real we show. Used to it's watch a real that show. All the time. <laughs> the animated show. Hope if Hope was here, she would know. Yeah. Uh, my wife, who's a Disney fanatic. But anyway, Where for my you, for my Disney villain, <laughs> um, I think. I am going to go with, 
all these villains are just flashing through my mind. I think the one that I think has one of the coolest songs and is, I think, the most interesting and diabolical in that he actually succeeded is Scar. Oh, it's true. He has one of the best bad guy songs, Be Prepared, is such a good bad guy song, which they kind of got away from. Like, name the last Disney bad guy that had an awesome bad guy song. Mother Gothel. In I Rapunzel. think Be Prepared is better. I mean, it's but better, I mean, but I'm just, you Frozen said, didn't. you said, name a Disney villain that had an awesome bad guy song. And I would say that Mother Knows Best by Mother Gothel is disturbing and up there. Let me, let me. And that's fairly recent let me in clarify. Disney years. The last, like, iconic bad guy song. Mother Knows Best, man. I don't, I don't know. And the Princess and the Frog, the voodoo guy. Has his song. Okay, to be fair, I've only seen that one once. So I they, can't they really... They all have one. Frozen is weird because... Ugh, I don't even want to talk about Frozen. Moana didn't have a bad guy song. Well, there was Maui Shiny. Maui is... Okay, Shiny. That, I don't... And Maui is a gray character until the end. Whatever you say. <laughs> he is! He totally is. He's I'm just totally saying. self-serving and does not care that the heart of Tafiti is missing. My goodness. There's so much hostility right now. I'm just <laughs> saying, be prepared. I'm just saying that Disney still does villain songs. That's all I'm saying. But I will agree but that I be prepared that the, is iconic and perfect. I think that the quality of the Disney villain songs has not been like as good as the past. Okay. Is the point I'm trying to make. Okay. I think Be Prepared is, like, one of the top-tier villain songs. Which is why Scar, I think, is my top Disney villain. And he actually, like, succeeds. Mulan's villain doesn't have a song. No, he doesn't. The animated one. I don't know about live action, because I haven't seen it yet. But I heard the live action was not good. I haven't watched it, so I can't speak. But, um, but yeah, like, <laughs> Scar, like, totally succeeds. Like, he kills Mufasa. It's true. And gets Simba to run away and runs the kingdom for however long until it until turns into Simba's a wasteland. An the only reason Scar didn't succeed is because Simba came back and kicked his butt. So right. it's like... And he, if Simba would have stayed away, he would have kept... Yeah. Yeah. And so he like succeeded and he's diabolical and it's basically Hamlet. Like he... <laughs> it is Hamlet. And... Uh, Simba's Hamlet. Yeah. I mean, the story is Hamlet. Clarify. The title of the book. Yes. Hamlet. Not the character Hamlet. Scar <laughs> right. is not Hamlet. Uncle, Simba is Ham whose Hamlet. His name is eluding me. And that's going to the uncle. bug the crap out of me. L name? Oh, I don't know. It's right there. If you take your headphones off, you can grab it. It's no. next to Batman. I, I was thinking of King Lear. Bookshop. That's not right. Yeah, but I can see the book. No, nah, it's too far. It's too much effort. Uh, so yeah, I'm going with Scar. That's going to be my... Disney villain. Scar is a good answer. Um, Who were you going to go with? Well, I was in a similar vein. I was, but um, I wasn't going to pick Lion King, even though I think Scar is a great choice. I was um, tied between Ursula and Jafar. And I think that I'm actually going to pick Jafar mm. because there are few villains that give me the heebie-jeebies as much as Jafar does. Yeah, he's gross. Like, Frollo in Hunchback is gross, but I didn't watch the Hunchback of Notre Dame that much as a kid. Now talk about a good villain song, Hellfire, <laughs> with <laughs> right. Frollo. That's a really good villain song. Anyway. Right. But, um, but I think I'm going to pick Jafar, because there's also, like, some... The way that... I've talked about this with you before, but the way that... Um, Disney used to code villains for kids, I thought was very ingenious and important. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for kids to know who the bad guy is very clearly. And this is why Frozen is not one of my favorite movies. Because Hans, you don't realize, is a bad guy until the very end. Yeah. And I don't like that. I don't like that for a kid's movie. You can do that in an adult movie, whatever, I don't care. But I don't like it in a kid's movie. Because kids need to know how to pick out bad guys <laughs> yeah. in their, like, life. You need to be able to see someone and be like, I need to be careful. 
Yeah, that's that's an interesting that is so. an interesting topic because it's like where because you also want kids to know that like just because someone doesn't look bad, you still shouldn't like. But it wasn't about the way Jafar looked; it was about the way he acted. Like he was a person of power who was abusing that power to get yeah. what he wanted, um, and was telling lies and half truths to get that. Yeah, like I think that's important. But in Frozen, Hans is like. A good guy. Yeah. He's even likable. Right. And because then... you think that he's just like as kind of goofy and quirky as Princess Anna. And yeah. then it's like, oh no, he's awful. Yeah. <laughs> right when you think it's going to be true love's kiss. And then he's not. Yeah. That's. Anyway. That was rough. And Incredibles did it too. Incredibles 2 with the uh, yeah. the lady who was like really good buddies with. That's um, true. Elastigirl, and then turns on them at the end. Right. So it was just kind of an era of like Disney, Disney villains becoming or Pixar. Which I also going... didn't like the second Incredibles movie that well compared yeah. to the first one. Yeah, it's hard for sequels. But Frozen, Frozen Two, is much better than Frozen One. In your opinion, I think that that is universally accepted. Oh, I that's think a that bold claim. no, I'm just saying that I think that most people, <laughs> most people that I have talked to. Not that I talk to a lot of people about Frozen. I think that adults enjoy Frozen 2 more than Frozen 1. Because there's more, there's just more in it. It has a better storyline. Yeah. I think that um, adults definitely enjoy 2 more than 1. I don't know about kids, though. I haven't, like, talked to little kids because... because they like the Into the End. No, they like like the original songs from Frozen. Yeah. They're more annoying. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> don't yeah. hate me disney i love disney it's just frozen was so i worked in an elementary school when that movie came out Ooh. and it was that's rough oh, <laughs> it was a lot <laughs> yeah but so okay anyway so, so i'm gonna pick jafar nice but ursula is like right up there and so is scar like i think all three of those are they're like they're like the villain um trio yeah trifecta Ursula, Scar, Jafar. They're mm-hmm. they're all really strong Disney villains. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah. And I I mean, I love Ursula's song. But yeah, I I yeah. I'm gonna pick Jafar, which when we get to Mount Rushmore is gonna be confusing, but that's okay. Okay. We'll get there. <laughs> Iago is on on his Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I love Iago. I love Iago in the like <laughs> In the Aladdin sequels, because yeah. he becomes a good guy. Yeah. And he's so funny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yago okay. and Abu. Great team. That's true. Those are great <laughs> side characters. <laughs> yeah. For the next franchise, it's Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> we didn't start there. No. But it's next. That's okay. So I will start, because mine is pretty easy. There's a okay. lot. There's a lot of villains to choose from. In Star Wars, because you've got the prequels, the original, and the sequel trilogy, as well as all of the um, other standalone movies. Um, But I have to go with Darth Vader. I knew you would. Because it's just... the Everything is so iconic about Darth Vader. And he is... Like, the breathing. Like, everyone knows Darth Vader. You could have just not seen Star Wars your whole life. But even you know that, oh, I am your father. You know? Like... And the, the, everyone knows the breathing, the red lightsaber. Right. He's just so menacing. And, um, yeah, so I have to go with Darth Vader for, um, Star Wars. Although, um, it is tricky choosing between Darth Vader and, like, um, some of the prequel people, especially if you, like, see Clone Wars, like, Darth Maul is really cool in Clone Wars as, like, a villain, but so honorable mention Darth Maul, but I have to go with Darth Vader. All right, Anna, here you go. <laughs> okay, I've been keeping very quiet because I knew you were going to say Darth Vader, and our dad would a hundred percent say Darth Vader yeah. as like the ultimate villain of all time, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, and I appreciate Darth Vader. However, I have recently. <laughs> recently been re-watching through Star Wars, which I mentioned in, like, episode one of the podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's it's just taking me a long time because there's a lot of Star Wars material A lot now. of Star Wars content. Um, and I recently 
finished the original trilogy. So I've been going through chronological order. And I remember as a kid thinking that Darth Vader was scary because he was menacing. But you don't actually see him do a lot of really evil stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, you <laughs> like, see him choke people to yeah, death. Yeah, but, okay. But that compared to uh, Jabba the Hutt pushing people into a rancor pit and watching them get eaten versus... I'm not picking Jabba the Hutt. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, that would have been an interesting choice. I was going to be really surprised and impressed. I'm just saying that there are other things happening in the original trilogy that I would say rival Darth Vader in, far as, in as far as, like, scariness. But when you compare that to, like, how you... Here's my, here's my real issue with Darth Vader, okay? We know his whole story. We know how he started as a kid. We know how he became Darth Vader. But he started out as, like, mm-hmm. this Jedi that was kind of arrogant, but, like, had good intentions. And then because of promises that a worse bad guy made to him, um, became Darth Vader. And then... So after watching the original or the the prequel series and then the Clone Wars, I just ended up feeling really bad for Darth Vader because yeah. all he wanted was his wife and kids. That's all he wanted, and he lost it all. Oh, he's tragic. And it just makes me feel bad for him. And then you also know that he gets a redemption story, and he gets to come back to the light side, and he dies a hero because he threw Palpatine off the the balcony or whatever and and, and he didn't dies kill him. <laughs> didn't kill him whatever <laughs> we thought he killed him yeah. for 20 years he really thought that he 20 got him. plus years <laughs> as far as vader knew he got him which you know at um, least he died thinking that more than 20 years man <laughs> huh we thought he killed him okay when did when did return of the jedi come out oh i don't know yeah so like more than 20 years a yeah. lot longer than 20 years but um so I have a hard time picking Darth Vader because I feel very sympathetic towards him. So, um, which is fair. Which is the same reason why I wouldn't pick Kylo Ren, even though I'm less sympathetic to Kylo Ren. Yeah. Because his story is less fleshed out for us. He only had three movies, whereas right. Darth Vader had six and Plus. a Clone Wars TV show, right? And other movies that he like Rogue One he showed up in. Like Darth yeah. Vader has so much more time on screen than Kylo Ren. Yes. Now, I mentioned Jabba as kind of an aside. Jabba has also... Jabba has technically had the same number of movies <laughs> as Darth Vader. <laughs> technically. He's, he's been in universe. He's been in universe the same amount of time. Oh. I thought he meant like appearances. <laughs> I was Vader. like... No, no, no. That's not but true. He comes but up, I know but what he you comes mean. up in other things. Yeah. Um, anyhow, I'm not picking Jabba the Hutt. I'm picking Darth Maul because Ooh. I... When I watched the prequel movies as a kid, I thought that it was a huge disservice that Maul died in the first movie because he was such an interesting, visually, character. And Mm -hmm. he was scary. Yeah. I mean, he had a double-ended lightsaber. Right. Um, And then when you watch the animated series, the Clone Wars series, Mm -hmm. he's not actually dead. And he has this, like, he's very... He's like <laughs> the one bad guy that anytime he comes up against Kenobi, it's like a draw basically mm-hmm. in the Clone Wars until until the end. <laughs> yeah. The end of Maul. That's all I'm going to say. But, um, and he's just very interesting and very conniving and very smart. But he's also like, feels like he's been betrayed by the dark side and he just becomes his own entity. He's not a Sith anymore. He's just a guy who wants revenge. Like he's above it. He's above, like, being part of Palpatine's, mm-hmm. like, puppets. Like, definitely still bad. Oh, yeah. But he no, no, fights, no. He fights bad. for his own team. Yeah, he, but he's, he's doing his own thing. Mm-hmm. He has his own agenda. Um, he's a very compelling villain to watch. Yes. Because you, you kind of do feel sympathy for him. Oh, yeah, because he but got burned so bad by right, Palpatine. Right, but it's not the same sympathy as Anakin. Yeah. So I'm picking Maul. That's a good choice. I approve. Thank you. Because he would probably be my second, followed by but, right. Palpatine, I would say. Yeah. Um, but I can't even really pick... We're going to get into this a little bit when we get to Lord of the Rings. But I can't even really pick Palpatine 
because he's just the big bad in the background, not doing much dirty work. True, except for I do love Palpatine in episode three. Yes. He had like the heavy hood of Darth Plague is the wise. Yes. Like that is my, maybe my favorite Star Wars scene. Yeah. Palpatine and Anakin in the opera house right. on Coruscant is so good. Yeah, no, I but, agree. Um, I get what you mean, though. It's hard to pick just the big bad guy who's just kind of, they're, they're almost more of an obstacle than anything. Like you don't actually get to see, right? like you don't really dive too deep. But it's like in real life when you're having a bad day, you're not, and you had, to, if you had to pick a bad guy for your bad day, you're I not going to say. Monday. Well, no, I'm, I was going to say, you're not going to pick Satan. <laughs> you're yeah. going to pick, well, it was that dumb guy who cut me off. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you're picking the instrument that made the day bad, not the like not yeah, I know. Yeah. It's not a great sense. analogy, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I feel you though. <laughs> I get it. Okay. I get it. Which is why it's easier to pick like the the henchmen yeah. people. Because they're the ones that actually get in your way and make yeah. things difficult. Like Darth Vader. He's the or henchman. Darth Maul. Yeah. Um anyway, so after Star Wars, we are going on to Stargate for okay. all the Stargate fans out there. Um, however few of you there are, but, uh, which is sad because it's a great show and it's on Netflix now. Go watch Stargate yeah, as you want on Netflix. Do, it. do um, it. It's an old show. But it's so good. But it's good. Get, get, once you get through the second season, it becomes yeah. less 90s cringe. Yeah. <laughs> but I already know who my favorite villain is in Stargate. Okay. So I will start us off. They are my favorite a uh, big bad that the team has to face, and that is Anubis. <gasps> That's literally what I was going to say. <laughs> yes. Anubis is my favorite because he was by far the most threatening of all the ghouls that they had to take out. Because he's death. And he's, yeah, he's the Egyptian god of death. Yeah. And he was also an ascended being who was like mm-hmm. not even a physical form. He was like, he had transcended that and he was like. He just, looked like Palpatine. He kind of, yeah, he had the Sith robes going on, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and his voice was super creepy. But, um, yeah, Anubis was by far my favorite Stargate villain. Yeah, I agree. I pick Anubis as well. But I was also going to give an honorable mention to Ra, because he's the original big bad. Even though he got taken out in the movie that uh, came out before the show. But, he... or do you mean Apophis? I meant Apophis. I said uh, Ra, but I meant Apophis. Yeah, Ra is I'm the sorry, guy in the you. original. You're right. That's Stargate why I was movie. having a hard time because I was like, not Anubis, the other one that was first. Apophis. Apophis. Ra was also good, but Apophis. Yeah. Thank you. For You're welcome. Me. I haven't watched that show in a long time. It has been a hot second. <laughs> um, I don't fault you for that. Yeah. Well, hey, that was an easy one. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't pick the Ori. No. Because <laughs> they're Shut the worst. Shut your mouth. <laughs> the worst arc seriously if you watch sg1 just stop at eight like finish eight don't watch nine and ten just skip just skip don't. nine and ten and ju- jump straight to stargate atlantis yes. because you'll thank us later stargate atlantis is really awesome yes um but we've talked about that before mm-hmm. okay so anubis for stargate um for n- the next franchise we're gonna go with marvel the mm-hmm. Marvel Cinematic Universe, not comics or anything, not that we would even be an authority on that because we haven't read the comics. Not at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, for this one, there's a couple different people that I have in mind. Um, do you want me to start for this one? No, I'll start. I just can't think of what her name is. You'll have to help me. Oh. Um, so I really like Loki as a big... As a as a vegan, as a, <laughs> uh, as a villain, is Loki vegan? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't. I don't know why a G got thrown in there. Um, Ice Giants vegan. Um, I like Loki, but he doesn't always feel like a villain. He yeah. is, but he isn't because he's Thor's brother. Yeah, like in the first Avengers movie, he is, but he he's like he's a great character. Yeah, he's he's very um almost almost in the anti-hero realm. Yeah. He's edgy, he's like jaded, he's got a chip on his shoulder. He feels cheated. But yeah. he and he usually just looks out for himself, but he also I think cares about Thor. Mm-hmm. And he does care about a few other people and 
Right. I, I'm excited to see where that goes in the Loki TV show that's going to come out. Yes. Somewhat soon. Same. Um, anyway. But I'm not picking Loki. Um, I'm going to pick Thor and Loki's sister. Hela. Hela. Thank you. I was going to say Helga. Helga. Maybe that's where the G came from. Maybe. Um, Hela. Um, because Kate Blanchett as a scary villain lady is scary. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it was very well done. Um, and all the other Marvel bad guys, like Thanos, obviously awful. Mm-hmm. But um, I really liked Hela, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. She was very scary to me. <laughs> and very cool. I agree. Um, seeing Kate Blanchett in a villain role was definitely something else. Yeah. Because we were used to seeing her as like Galadriel or mm-hmm. um, she was Queen Elizabeth in that one movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. That's, <laughs> or Elizabeth. You know. I think she's played Queen Elizabeth twice. Oh, has she? That's kind of cool. I think so. Um, which Could she was wrong. great. Um, so yeah, I'm used to seeing her in like a really uh, formal kind of regal kind of like a woman of authority kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Not like an evil. I mean, she was a bad guy in Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. Oh, I forgot all about that. Wait, what? <laughs> there was a fourth Indiana Jones movie? I, I, uh, sorry. Uh, what's I that effect called? Right. The Berenstein Bear thing? That never happened. we all thought it happened and then it didn't? What's that I don't... (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) weird. Moving on. That never happened. Um, That movie was great until the end. (laughs) I don't even know what you're talking about. Okay. So. uh, (laughs) Until it was actually Aliens. It's like Scooby-Doo in the... Zombie Island. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like spooky, but... And then it turns out to be actual ghouls and not... Yeah. That that's kind of a theme in all the indiana jones movies though with like the ark of the covenant and people's faces get melted off and like last crusade people get shriveled up by the holy grail hmm. like it's always been real in indiana jones and like so. temple of doom but al- i don't know aliens is a different kind of yeah it's a totally it's different, different. Vein. <laughs> aliens is a yeah Anyway, we're, we're not, not talking about Indiana Jones. I'm so sorry. Kate so, Blanchett as a villain is very compelling and Hela, scary, Hela, and she's amazing. Hela, the goddess of death in Norse mythology. Yes. Played by Kate Blanchett in Thor Ragnarok. So, yeah. I am going to go with Thanos for mine. Okay. But I will have an honorable mention, but let me explain Thanos first. Thanos, I think, is one of the most compelling Marvel villains because of his motive. And he is so utterly convinced that he's right. And it, it's like, when you watch Infinity War, uh, watch it from the perspective of Thanos being the hero of the story. Mm-hmm. And the Avengers are the obstacles that he's overcoming. And each time he claims one of the Infinity Stones, he uses that same Infinity Stone to get the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And it's so clear when you watch Infinity War that it's Thanos' story. Like, yeah, he is, like, the savior of the universe in Infinity War, in his mind. And he is so convinced that he's saving, the like, the universe, all of existence, with what he's trying to do, even though he's literally trying to wipe out half of all life. Right. To prevent overpopulation. Which is just unthinkably evil. Yeah. Um, but he is so convinced he's right. How many times can I say that? But See, he... and I don't even know what Hela's motivation is. I went, I went pure aesthetic with my choice <laughs> of her. <laughs> Which, hey, that's fine. That's valid. Um, <laughs> she's, she's, she's pointy. She's very spiky. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, and Thanos is just kind of a Big bald raisin. Blob. <laughs> yeah. Who's super strong. <laughs> yeah. Who went toe-to-toe with Hulk without even using an Infinity Stone Mm -hmm. and beat up Hulk. Pretty bad. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I have to go with Thanos just because of, like, yes, he's the big overarching villain of, like, the entire first Infinity Saga of, like, the first four phases of Avengers. Or three. Or three phases. I need to rewatch. See, I'm like, I need to rewatch all these movies. And I'm like, ugh, so many movies. I know. And they're still making more. (laughs) I don't want to do it, but I feel like I need to do it. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Um, But I think that they did a really good job with making him fun to watch with his dialogue. Every time he speaks, it's intelligent. You know, Mm -hmm. he's not the kind of villain to just like fly off the handle and start screaming at people. Kylo Ren. 
Um, yeah, he he's he's like a really well adjusted, <laughs> like yeah, for what he is. Even yeah. though, well, he's probably some kind of sociopath, or I don't know. But he apparently loved Gamora because right. when he sacrificed her for the Soul Stone, it worked. Right. So he gave up the thing he loved most. He was capable of love. So, yeah, he's he's way more complex than I was expecting. Um, but I'm going to give an honorable mention to Killmonger from Black Panther. <gasps> oh. Michael B. Jordan, Killmonger. Oh, so good. What an amazing performance, too. Incredible. He, okay. he really kind of salvaged the uh, Marvel villain uh, dry spell because, like, in Civil War, there was... I don't even know his name. It was just some no random, random dude that was starting all that drama i was gonna say i thought that their point of that was that and ultron (laughs) all the avengers were the bad guys (laughs) ultron was kind of i i mean i enjoyed um james spader but (laughs) we already talked about this i his voice in that movie is so distracting it's kind of odd (laughs) it is odd but i mean ultron was a um loki's good but you know at this point it's arguable whether or not he's even a villain right um but yeah killmonger really kind of uh brought back the Marvel villains that you that are actually really entertaining to watch. Um, and his motives also were very, very understandable why he felt the way yeah. he felt. No, absolutely. And you almost wanted him to win. <laughs> right. Well, I want him, I wanted him to have some redemption arc, which he did not get. No, he didn't have a redemption arc, but he's the kind of bad guy that you want to have a redemption arc because yeah. you can see exactly what happened that led him to be what he was mm-hmm. and you want salvation for him in the end. Yeah. Because you feel bad for him. He is pretty heartbreaking. Yeah. Um like I'm pretty sure I cried <laughs> when they yeah. were going through his backstory. Yeah. Um yeah, I I love Which isn't saying a whole lot. I cry a lot during movies. Well but emotions mean something. Thank you. Thank you for validating my crying. In You're movies. welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have to give honorable mention to him. He'd be my second place. Um, no, that's good. For all my Marvel. Both of your answers are better than my picking Hella for. Although, Spiky girl. But she, was, but she was so evil that her dad put her in a box. Yeah. And didn't want her to ever. To be fair, that's kind of Odin's move. <laughs> it's true. In the first Thor movie. I think you could probably say that Odin is also a bad guy. <laughs> of a sort. Arguably, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we are going to move on from Marvel to another Disney franchise. Monopolies are bad. To another Disney franchise, <laughs> which is Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm. Now, this one, there's not as many options, no. um, but there really, are a couple. There, there, are, there are a couple. Um, there's like three big ones off the top of my head. Um, three? Yeah. Okay. Well, technically, there's like five but the two oh. from the later movies okay. i think are lame and they're not on my list <laughs> i don't even know what you're talking blackbeard about. and that captain salazar guy from the about. last one this movie still exists huh i don't know what you're talking about oh okay yeah it's just like crystal skull mm-hmm. we're just okay that's fair so it ended <laughs> with um the third pirates movie that's where no, i should ended. say the fourth one is okay even that it's, i don't it's okay yeah the fifth one is bleh. I think, yeah, I did I did like the fourth one more than the fifth one. The fifth yeah. one just like jumped the it jumped the shark. Like probably literally. If I hadn't gone to see it in a theater, if I had just like rented it, I don't know if I would have even finished it. Yeah, I probably would have turned it off. In, anyway. Within the first ten minutes. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> We're talking about our favorite Pirates of the Caribbean villain. Yeah. Which Because you... we actually love the first three movies. Oh yeah. They're some of my favorite um Pirate movies. Pirate movies ever. Which you may um, not think there's a lot of pirate movies, but there are. There's a ton of pirate movies. <laughs> Some of them are, I mean, a lot of them are really old, but, or, or quote, really old. Older. Yeah. But anyway, um, I will start this one, since you started the Marvel one. I am picking Davy Jones, because he is so entertaining to watch, and I love the uh, motion capture work and the accent and playing the organ with the tentacle beard mm-hmm. is distu- disgustingly cool. <laughs> yeah. And he's, yeah, he's got some of the best dialogue. <laughs> totally fair. 
Um, but I'm gonna. This is a theme. I have to give honorable mention to um, Barbosa from the first one. You're not allowed to say Barbosa because you picked him as a good guy, and we argued from about this. From the first one. <laughs> from the first one when he's a bad guy. Okay. But I'm specifically I, I saying you're not allowed to pick Barbosa. Okay. So it's good. That's fine. I didn't. I picked David Jones. Jones. But I can't pick Beckett because it's too real. <laughs> For real. <laughs> because Beckett is everything that's wrong with the world today. <laughs> and um, it's too real and I get too angry. Uh, I can't pick him because it shatters the escapism. <laughs> yeah, no, I get so that. So I have to pick Davy Jones, the literal like Satan of the ocean. <laughs> but it's fine. Okay. All right. Who's your favorite? I'm thinking villain? Barbosa. Okay, yeah. Because I would not be into the Pirates of the Caribbean without that first movie and Barbosa being such a villain. Mm-hmm. But and, he's so fun to watch. And he's still kind of a villain in the later ones. He's less of a villain because there's Davy Jones to deal with. But he has a redemption. Yeah, but he sh- okay, but he shows up in the second one after you think he's dead at the very end of the second one. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, he's still alive. And you think he's going to be a problem. And he is kind of a problem. I mean, he clashes he with the Jack. He clashes with Jack <laughs> over the, the captaincy of the ship. Yes. Because it used to be his ship, even right. though it was Jack's ship before it was his ship. But, yeah, um, right. so yeah, they, they definitely, anymore. <laughs> they definitely Too clash. Yes. But I think you can, I think in the first movie, he was definitely a villain and that's valid yes. to pick him as a villain. I'm picking him. Um, and he's very fun to watch as a villain. So fun to watch. He has he just has that smart. classic. He is smart. He has that classic like pirate just dialogue. Just the you know just the arr, like yeah, he's yeah. he's just he just nailed that so well. Like the classic Long John Silver speak. You know. Yeah. He's got a pet monkey. Yes. And he bites an apple in the first one, so you know. Or no, he doesn't actually bite it because he can't, but he wants to bite it. <laughs> right. Bad guys bite apples in movies. It's just a thing. So. That is the only movie with surprise zombies that I am, like, 100% okay with. Yeah, you're not a zombie fan. But I'm they not a okay. zombie fan, and I hate it when I'm watching something, Game of Thrones, where you don't know it's going to be zombies, and then all of a sudden there are zombies. I hate that. I hate it. You know what's funny? I feel like I've been hoodwinked. You know what's funny? The next franchise is Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm not picking the, the zombie in Night King. No, the I Night King them. went out like, okay, so we're not even going to talk about season eight of Game of Thrones. No, That's worth its own not. podcast. Um, but, but is the it dumpster though? Fire. Because anyone who, Game of Thrones killed itself. It, it Because really the last did. season was so bad that people who were diehard fans can't even talk about it anymore. Yeah. That's bad. Yeah. They kind of, they kind of fumbled there. Uh, they shot I'm getting more place. fired up about this podcast than I anticipated. Yeah, man, how'd you okay. sleep last night? Are you, uh... I slept great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, hmm. Game of Thrones. So, there's the usual suspects, you know. I almost don't even want to pick Joffrey, though, out of spite. Because I just hate him that much that I don't I even know. want to talk about it. <laughs> I know. But maybe that means he's a... He's <laughs> worthy to be the top of the list but i didn't enjoy watching him because i hated him yeah but he has a great actor props to the actor yes and props to all the hate that i think the actor got for how good of a job he did and he was a child actor yeah so that kind of sucks but um so good on you man right if i remembered your name i'd say it right now um the actor for joffrey and game of thrones anyway do you have someone in mind for this, for your favorite villain? Joffrey feels like the, the classic choice. Um, but really, any Lannister, aside from Tyrion, is fair game. That's true. So can we just say the Lannisters stands Tyrion? <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe. <that's... laughs> because they all kind of... I'm even going to put Jamie in there because he's... Such an idiot in the last season. Yeah. Um, Although we don't know how his story ends in the books. Maybe he'll, you know, we'll see. Um, Joffrey's the one who killed Ned Stark. I mean, he didn't actually like. He gave the order. He gave the, the order. on his hands. 
and Ned Stark is my favorite character, so I feel like in order to do Ned Stark justice, I have to pick Joffrey. Mm-hmm. But I also thought that Danny was going to be a villain the whole series, so in that regard, I feel like the eighth season validated my theory that she was going to end up becoming the ultimate bad guy. Spoilers. <laughs> Are you allowed to say spoilers? That's kind after of a hot take this? because a lot of people hate that they did that to Danny. No, but I okay, but when I was reading the books, oh yeah, I was like, that's fair. In the books, it's very clear, in my opinion, very clearly set up that she is going to become a bad guy. Hmm. She starts out as a kid and a child bride, but like the things that happened to her, I'm like, wow, this is the origin story of a villain if I ever read one. Interesting. But the, but the show didn't lay that groundwork. They made no. her out to be like the ultimate good guy, liberating people. Yeah. Um, and so I think they did a disservice to themselves. I think if they would have played it like George R. R. Martin did in the early books, that would have been more compelling and made more sense in the show. But Amelia Clark, though, is so endearing. <laughs> yeah, she's hard the to actress. dislike. She's yeah. hard to dislike. So I get anyway. it. But, so I think I'm going to have to pick Joffrey. But really, any of the Lannisters. Cersei's okay. up there. Tywin's up there. Yeah, I'm not going with Cersei. I think I am going with Tywin. Mm. Specifically Tywin Lannister. Because he is uh, calculating and... Yeah. Um, and awful to his children. Totally awful. and But he <laughs> he always does whatever gets his house ahead. Yeah. Um, and like Even from like the lore of what happened before... Um, the first Game of Thrones book with like the sacking of King's Landing in Robert's Rebellion and all that. Um, you know, he always just does, he always goes with the winning side and he's willing to switch sides on a whim so long as he's helping the winning side. Right. And the actor for Tywin, again, if I knew your name, I would say it. I'm so sorry. Um, this was, can you tell this podcast isn't that scripted? Um, <laughs> on purpose. Yeah. But. He is very entertaining to watch. Yeah. Um, he's he's kind of like a Shakespearean actor, right? I think yeah, he has, yeah. yeah. I think he has a history in theater. Yes, I think he's in, I think he's in quite a few um, Shakespeare plays. Yeah. So I'm going with Tywin Lannister. He's very fun to watch, and uh, he's just diabolical. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm going to go with for Game of Thrones. Yours is a better answer. <laughs> but he's in there for me. I really, there's. You could you could almost argue that any character in Game of Thrones is a bad guy. They all have their dark sides. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not Arya. I don't know. Well, no. No, you could definitely make an argument that Arya is not. I she's to, a gray character. I wanted to take that back as soon as those words For left my mouth. For <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, so next up. The only one you could say is Bran. And Rickon. Rickon. Okay, Rickon got done dirty. I agree with you on that one. <laughs> Bran, he was pretty much just also scheming to become the king with his psychic powers. Okay, apparently. but that wasn't his. But that was after he became the third, the three eyed raven, which yeah. I would argue at that point he's possessed by something else. Oh, interesting. Maybe Bran becomes the next big bad. And <laughs> anyway, that's a that's a tangent. Okay, so we're moving on. Him becoming the king of everything was the dumbest thing. You're correct. And we'll talk about it on a future <laughs> podcast. Because that's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, we're going to have to split them up so we don't seem like we're complaining too much. But like, we're going to have to have a podcast for the Hobbit trilogy and for season eight of Game of Thrones. And like, I feel like the season, th- the Game of Thrones season, ugh, season eight series finale is more valid. I feel like when I'm complaining about the Hobbit, it is. Oh, it's totally like petty. Yeah, um, and it's well, only for the because... most part, it's just because we're super fans and we know the 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 yeah. source material so well. But right. season eight or every gripe is very valid with season eight. Yes. But anyway, we we're moving on to Harry Potter. Oh. This is a franchise that we don't have a ton of experience in because I personally have not read the books. I've only seen the movies. I've only read the first book. Okay, that's true. I've read the first one, but the reading level is so low now that I it's hard. It's hard to, to do. Um, <laughs> but maybe funny? someday it gets so easy that it becomes hard <laughs> yeah yeah um do you have a favorite villain in mind well from the movies hope told me hers before i came over the problem is that i do not know them that well mm. the, when you said harry potter it's like there's only one bad guy and it's voldemort 
Ah, uh-huh, not true. But it's not true. <laughs> um, so I, as we've been talking, um, I was like, well, I could pick the Dursleys because the way they treat Harry Potter is awful. Mm. But I think I'm going to go with Bellatrix. That's who Hope picked. Okay. Partially because of aesthetic. <laughs> That's fair. And Helena Bonham Carter is creepy and wonderful. Uh-huh. So I'm going to go with Bellatrix. I don't have really a lot of good reasoning behind that. I don't know her backstory. I know that she is scary in the in the movies. She kills Dobby. <gasps> she does? Yeah. Ugh. Okay, see? Even more reason to pick her. I thought Dobby got away because he got a sock. <laughs> oh no you gotta you haven't I mean, watched I've the movies seen, in a long time I haven't time. seen them in a long time I've only seen them all he once he does be- become freed from being a slave he got a sock. when he got a sock but in uh, I think it's the oh. I think it's part one of the last movie I think yeah Bellatrix <laughs> crying because uh, throws I a he because he like helps them teleport out somewhere but right. bellatrix throws a knife oh you're right and it like goes through oh with you're them right it... i had like blocked that out because it was so sad oh no okay well i'm picking bellatrix confirmed yeah i feel validated now um i'm gonna go with the most hated character as umbridge oh <gasps> Oh, I forgot about her. She's, She's the awful. most hated character. I I think that's true. I think I believe that a lot of Harry Potter fans totally despise her. So I'm picking her. That's a good. That's a good choice. I've only seen the movie that she was in once, but that was enough <laughs> for me to really, really dislike yeah. her. Yeah. I forgot about her. Uh huh. Um, <sighs> okay, so we're going What's to round that? things out with our favorite. Okay. Our favorite franchise, and that is all things Middle Earth. So this is going to cover. The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, The Silmarillion, your favorite villain. This is actually harder than you think it's going to be. Yeah, because everyone's like, oh, Lord of the Rings, the only one is Sauron or Saruman or Witch King. But there's, you know, The Hobbit has Smog, which is, he has some really cool moments. Silmarillion has a, some more super creepy people. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to pick one of those. Um, what? No. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm going to go with the Witch King of Angmar. Good choice. I respect um, it. Because picking Sauron or Morgoth feels like picking Satan. Um, yeah. And as I've already said, they're not, I mean, Sauron is scary. Mm. Like the eye is scary, but he's not actually like, I mean, I guess he's doing things through the ring. But you never really, but, in the movies anyway, you never really see him do things personally right, other than like show up in the, in the prologue and like yeah. throw some people around with his big mace. But like you don't right. see him do anything like super diabolical or right. evil personally. Whereas the Witch King of Angmar and the Nazgul are, they terrorize people. They yeah. are terrorists. They come in to the Shire and they freak out the hobbits trying to find the ring and Frodo Baggins. Also noise pollution with all that screaming. <laughs> and they're just creepy. Like the scene yeah. in the Fellowship of the Ring where they're, because they smell. Like that's their one sense. Oh yeah. And when they they're just hiding like under the tree. All the, the tree time. roots and they're like. Oh my gosh. <sighs> and then they, yeah. Any, anytime the Nazgul show up, it's like, oh my gosh, high stakes because these guys are Gary. There's just such for just like menacing Foreboding. presence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, once you get further into the series, um, the Witch King in particular um, becomes a big menace for mm-hmm. Eowyn, who is my girl. Yep. And I love that she killed him. Indeed. <laughs> she sure did. So. With the help of Mary. Yes. Yes. Couldn't have done it without Mary. No, could not have. But no, Witch King is a great choice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, especially looking at like the history of the character beyond just the movies. He is he is pretty dastardly, like with yeah. running Angmar and um, basically being responsible for destroying the Northern Kingdom. Right. Of um, yeah. Numenor or the Numenor descendants. Arnor. Mm-hmm. That's the kingdom's name. I had to I w- think about it. <laughs> I would say a close second would be Book Saruman, which I'm making Ooh, you that mean distinction. Saruman of many colors. <laughs> yes, I'm making that distinction because Book Saruman goes back to the Hobbit, and or goes back to the Shire, 
um, in Return of the King and ruins the Shire. Which is also a little too real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I but I, I, I do want to say that Saruman is legitimately... Yeah. He, like, brought awful. the... <laughs> yeah. He is awful. I'll give you that one. Yeah. yeah. So I think which which king's a great choice. Um for me um I am torn actually between a couple. And I know you said you can't pick Morgoth or Sauron because they're like the devil. I can't. That doesn't mean you can't. True. But um Mm. You can, because you've read The Silmarillion. I think if I had read The Silmarillion, I would have a different opinion of both of them, because you see them actually doing yeah. devious things. Um, I would still have to pick Sauron over Morgoth. Like, Morgoth is interesting, but um, Sauron has more interactions with people that's, like, mm-hmm. dastardly, I guess. Yeah. He's, he basically has a rap battle with an elf in the Silmarillion. So, I mean, <laughs> okay. that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty sweet. <laughs> um, uh, but it's a tie between Sauron and Ungoliant. Oh, the big spider. So, Ungoliant would be my choice if I was going for just sheer terror factor. Yeah. Sauron See, is who I would. Up, Sauron Shale is who up. I would go with. Yeah. With just like someone who is more calculating and, um, just kind of, evil scheming. Mm-hmm. But I think I am gonna actually go with Angoliant because you're gonna have to explain who I, it is. I will explain. So, so basically, we're gonna have to do like a deep cut video or a podcast rather of we should just do like deep cuts of different Lord of the Rings lore stuff. I'm working on the Silmarillion still. Um, I am still reading. Yeah, I'll get there. Just give me time. <laughs> so here's the thing with Angolian. Nobody actually really knows what it is or what she is. Oh. Isn't she the big spider? No, she is. Okay. But as far as like where she came from, it's like, was she a fallen Maiar? Like an oh. angelic spirit like Gandalf? Or or did she just come from the darkness of the universe and like nobody actually like knows exactly what she is? Or just, like, some dark spirit or something. But she's the mother of all spiders. Yeah. And she, she takes she nasty. takes the form of a giant spider um, and helps Morgoth destroy the trees of Valinor and... Which is so sad. And do some crazy stuff. Literally, she almost takes out Morgoth. Just because? Because she wanted... You're going to... I mean, this, I'm so sorry. This is like spoilers for you, but it's okay. It's whatever. I mean, I have read a lot of things. I'm sorry. I should talk into the mic. I'm looking at my bookshelf that has, that's behind me. Um, I have read a lot of, about the characters that are in the Silmarillion. So it's not as, it's not really, I don't feel like it's spoilery for me. Right. So for those of you that don't know, Morgoth was the big bad before Sauron. He was Sauron's boss, basically. He's still. And as far as, well, he's, he got kicked out. He's in the void. Like. Um, See, I didn't know that, so that yeah. was a spoiler. Yeah. <laughs> but basically, Morgoth was the original Dark Lord in Middle-earth, and he was Sauron's boss, um, more powerful than Sauron, for sure. And actually, um, he was the one responsible for like creating dragons, and um, the Balrogs were on his side, and he used... There were more than one Balrog. There was like a bunch of them. Uh, so he schemed to steal these Silmarils, which were these elven jewels that were super pretty and he stole them. And then, but he couldn't steal them without Ungoliant's help. So he went and asked her for help. And, uh, she made him promise that she could have them afterwards. Oh, (laughs) and because her thing is like, she consumes light. Yeah. So she is kind of just like the embodiment of darkness. She consumes light. She eats it. And the Silmarils give off, light from the two trees of which Aladon, she already ate which she had already eaten because <laughs> Morgoth or Melkor at that point was yeah it's confusing but anyway he reneges on this promise and refuses to give them to her and she freaks out and ropes him up in webs and is seriously about to take him out and the only reason he got saved is because he screamed so loud that his all his Balrogs heard him and came and saved him. 
Like it took oh it took all of the Balrogs coming to save him. Wow. <laughs> from Ungoliant. Okay. So good choice, man. She is my top, <laughs> my top <laughs> choice for choice. for Middle Earth villain because she's terrifying, and she's the mother of all spiders. Shaylob in Return of the King, that or two towers in the books. Shaylob, the giant spider in the mm-hmm. Pass of Kirithungul that um, attacks Frodo and Sam, is one of the daughters, the last one of the last remaining daughters of Ungoliant. So she's an offspring. So if I you hate thought, Shalob too. Yeah, if like you thought Shalob was scary, and Goliant is even worse. So. Shalob speaks more to a phobia of mine. Oh yeah, and anything. spiders are just creepy anyway. <laughs> you have to pick a giant spider. Yeah. No, good choice. Good choice. Anyway, so that's sorry, that's kind of a deep cut uh, for people that don't know a ton about the Lord of the Rings lore, but that's like my bread and butter, and I love talking about it. So I appreciate that you love talking yeah. about it. Alrighty. So that was mine, and yours is the Witch King. Mm-hmm. So now, that was all of my specific franchises I had. Okay. So next, we are going to pick our villainous Mount Rushmore. Okay. Who we think is worthy to be on our uh, big monument of villainy. Okay. So, I'm very curious <laughs> to hear, because I just talked a lot about Lord of the Rings, so it's your turn okay. to talk. So, I'm very curious, because you've... I know you've been like agonizing over this list. I really have. I've been having a very hard time. And really, I came up with two right away that I wanted. And yeah, then I could not think of the other two spots. That, that's to the save exact my life. same thing that happened to me. <laughs> so, first of all, the Witch King of Angmar is going to be on there. Okay. For me. Mm-hmm. Um, for all the reasons that I said before. <laughs> um, and then I have the White Witch from the Chronicles of Narnia. Oh, yeah. Good um, choice. Yeah, so I've been reading through the Chronicles of Narnia as a book club with some um, middle schoolers. I think that's how old they are. But um, it's online, so I don't actually know their ages. But if I had to guess, I'm guessing middle school. (laughs) Um, But we just, we read The Magician's Nephew, and now we're working on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And The White Witch is just... Scary. Scary and diabolical. And, like, literally, she destroyed her own world. Because she spoke the deplorable word. Yes. And she, when Diggory and Polly show up in her world and unfreeze her and then accidentally take her back with them to London, her first thought is, oh, look at this new world I can devour and destroy. Mm. And they get her out of that world and she ends up in Narnia, which isn't even a formed world yet. They show up as it's being created and while this new world is being created, it's not even populated yet. Her first thought is, I'm going to destroy this world. And then runs off. Like, she is just bent on world domination and power. That's all she wants. She's That's like a force all of she nature. craves. Yeah. And she's, like, very smart. She knows about the deep magic of the world. And, like, she is just conniving. And... Yeah. She, like... Right from the, like, she gets into the garden with Diggory and steals an apple, which ends up being her downfall in the long run of the Narnia series. But it, there's, it's just, she's so bad. She deserves to be on Mount Rushmore for villains. So you've got Witch King. And White and Witch. The White Witch. <laughs> Witch King, White Witch. Yes. And you've got two more slots. I know. So now, and that's where it became really difficult for me because I could not pick. Because I didn't want to pick Darth Vader. Because I have a feeling you picked Darth Vader. Okay. Well, you we can have similar characters. I know, I know. But, and, I mean, he's on my, like, I, he's on my list of eight. Um, eight? <laughs> well, that I was trying to narrow down from. But, so I did some, like, research on, like, top... 100 villains or whatever which really just brought up a lot of horror movie villains which like is not my jam i don't care about those guys they're all the same sorry if horror is your jam um i didn't even think about horror but one of the guys that showed up on the list was mr potter from it's a wonderful life interesting who's basically scrooge but doesn't get the redemption that scrooge gets yeah and so he's going on my mount rushmore that is fascinating right and I honestly would not have thought of it except that I looked up that list. Mm. Um, and I think I'm actually going to ignore the rest of my list. I'll give you my honorable mentions. Just okay, so that yeah, you can, I'm curious to see who else Because I had Grand Moff Tarkin, 
um, okay. from Star Wars. Because he's we didn't even talk about him, um, but he is like one of Emperor Palpatine's underlings who like gives Darth Vader a run for his money as far as like influence and power in the Empire yeah. anyway. Um, but I also had Admiral Thrawn, who um, is actually one of my as far as like Star Wars characters go, he's very interesting, even though he is a bad guy. Um, and in the extended universe legacy stuff, he comes up a lot. Um, and is he's he's a cool bad guy, but um, but he's kind of a great character for me. Like I know he's a bad guy, but his motivations or motives aren't always that evil compared to like some of the other bad guys in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Um. I had Joffrey. I'm not picking Joffrey because I don't want him to be immortalized on a rock. Yeah, he's just that bad. (laughs) Um, And I also had Smog. Yeah. The dragon. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think what I'm actually going to do is pick an actor who plays a lot of villains in classic movies that we grew up watching. And I can't think of his name. The guy that plays the bad guy in all the Errol Flynn movies. Basil Rathbone. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, because he just, he embodies so many villains for me that I grew up, like, hating and loving at the same, like, they're villains that you love to hate, Mm -hmm. because he's so, he's so charming, but he, like, he plays the Sheriff of Nottingham in... No, 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 he's Sir Guy of... Sir Guy of Gisborne, thank you, sorry. Yep. You're right, Sir Guy of Gisborne in um, Robin Hood, That's that's That is the face, if I picked him, that's the version that would be on the Mount Rushmore for me. Yes, but he's also in Captain Blood... And he's in the Seahawk, right? He's in the Seahawk. It's a different girl, oh. but I'm pretty sure he's in the Seahawk. That I'm not sure, actually. I'm look it up. I think we used to think, I think that was a childhood misconception of ours that he was, but I don't think he actually Because it's is. not Olivia de Havilland. Um, it's not the girl. Hold on. I'm going to look it up. Fill the space, man, while I, while I IMDb this. So, this podcast is sponsored. I'm just kidding. We don't have a sponsor. <laughs> Yet, maybe someday. So is Basil Rathbone. I can just talk about more Lord of the Rings lore. So there was another person that I was almost going to pick for my uh, Middle Earth villain. Basil, like Basil. (laughs) Basil, Basil. I was talking about the Z. (laughs) There was a uh, dragon big enough to break a set of mountains when it fell from the sky when it was killed. I almost picked that. And Caligon the Black. Don Jose Alvarez... De Carbodo is played by Claude Rains. Yeah. See, I didn't think it was him, but I, I remember I remember believing that it was when we were kids. Because it kind of looks like him. Yeah, they're kind of similar. The same with the leading actress. We we always thought, oh, that's Olivia de Havilland. No, I nope. knew it wasn't her. I knew that wasn't. I, I knew Donna Maria was not Olivia de Havilland. Even as a kid? Yeah. Okay, fine. That was the only one, because I was confused. I felt like... I felt like Errol Flynn was cheating on Olivia de Havilland with this other lady in this movie. Yeah. And I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Basil Rathbone. Um, Because I think he embodies classic villainy for me. I really like that. Because he also embodies like the golden age of Hollywood uh, villains, you know? Yep. I like that choice a lot. Thank you. Good job. That's how I got around not being able to pick for my other five options. (laughs) Okay, for my villainous Mount Rushmore, I picked some that are... More mainstream, just because I I pick the ones that I feel have had the most impact on, like, you know, how I perceive or, like, how I think that a villain should act, you know? Or, like, how, you know, these are the people that I, like, gauge villains against if I'm reading a new book, you know? Um, number one, this person gets, like, the George Washington spot. Oh, I didn't assign mine spots. That's fine. Um, and that is going to be Darth Vader. It's a solid choice. Yeah. I was, I really only didn't pick Darth Vader because I didn't want to pick the obvious thing. That's fine. That's totally (laughs) fine. Um, I mean, for all the reasons I said before, um, he's just so menacing and just everything about his like tormented past and his eventual redemption, I think, is really compelling story wise. Mm-hmm. And I just really enjoy, I really enjoy watching anything that has Darth Vader on screen. For my second pick, is Darth Vader's boss, Darth Sidious. Oh, 
because Darth Sidious kind of embodies the evil overlord. Yeah. You know, the evil emperor. Um, you know, that's just the kind of vibe he gives. And it's an amazing performance um, by, what's his name? Ian McDermott. I was right. It was, so it was an amazing performance by Ian McDermott. Um, I, I really love him in episode three, especially again for that, the opera scene between Palpatine and Anakin. Yeah. Very cool. And when you see, you just see Palpatine's hooks in him, Mm -hmm. he's just such a corrupting influence, Mm -hmm. but he's so entertaining to watch and because Anakin just wants to do the right thing. Yeah. He thinks he's doing the right thing. He's a, until he's really not. (laughs) Palpatine is a master manipulator and that's, and he's just that the epitome of the evil overlord. Mm-hmm. Kind of the first example I'd ever seen of that. And yeah. seeing like him with that foreboding music in like Return of the Jedi when they go into the throne room. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool stuff. Yes. So he gets a he gets a place. I am also picking Thanos. Okay. For just the sheer I think that is like my top experience in a movie theater ever is Avengers Endgame when the the portal scene when all the heroes come back it's and very cool. the clash with Thanos and his army that is my favorite movie theater moment ever cuz people were screaming and yeah. it's, I like don't understand how that all came together but I'm glad it did it worked <laughs> and I just it just gives me chills yeah. thinking about that moment and getting to see Thanos like he he had such an interesting he's just such an interesting villain in my opinion just because of his motivations again like for all the reason I said before but yeah seeing the movies that he was in were some of my favorite theater experiences ever so I think he has to be on there yeah so Thanos and then for my last spot I had to pick Sauron because Lord of the Rings as the eye no okay <laughs> no but this is this is book Sauron Okay. So, but I still like to think of Book Sauron having that super cool armor that he had in the prologue oh, yeah. of Fellowship. Yes. But, and I'm hoping that we get to see Sauron be evil and dastardly in this Amazon adaptation uh, for a Lord of the Rings show that's going to be in the Second Age. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I had to pick Sauron. He's just, he's a master deceiver. He does some super evil things in the Silmarillion. Again, he had a rap battle with an elf. <laughs> and won. Did he? I don't know. Yeah. I haven't read that. No, part. he did. I think. Yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. He's a superior being to an elf. He should be able to I beat mean, an elf. He would love to have heard you say that. That's true. <laughs> I know. Like, in the class of beings. I know, yeah. He's, he's like, an up a notch. <laughs> yeah, he's like an angelic being. An yeah. elf is just a, you know... Still a created thing. Right. Well, so was he. Yeah. It's you know whatever. what I mean. It gets hairy. But I mean, you listener might not know what I mean, but Joseph knows what I mean. know, I know. I think he won. I think Sauron won. But he also, see, if you look at him in the books, in the Silmarillion, he had the ability to shapeshift. He could turn into a bat. He could turn into a wolf. He could... Were the Mayar around, technically, when Iluvatar was singing the world into being? Like they were, they were the ones of... they were the ones that were actually singing. Okay, so yeah, yeah he should totally win a rap battle. He was yeah. part of the creation song. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> that's first chapter Silmarillion, so <laughs> I have read that part. But a couple times. <laughs> uh Finrod, who was the elf, did put up a good fight. But okay, good. uh yeah, Sauron is and then you see the stuff that he did in Numenor, like he he seriously like, an army, a superior army, was about to invade, and he just knew he wouldn't win with military might, surrendered, became their prisoner, worked his way up from prisoner, from war prisoner to advisor to the king, and completely corrupted the entire country and turned them into Morgoth worshippers. Like, he, I mean... <laughs> yeah, so he deserves a spot on my he, Mount Rushmore. I agree with you. On my Mount... This, see, that's the thing. Everyone has their own personal, because you haven't read all that stuff. No, I haven't. So. And Sauron is scary. You're just not as scary. And as if you're an only, if you're, 
No, totally. If you're just going off of the Lord of the Rings books, I should have thrown a wrench in there and said my favorite Middle Earth villain is Tom Bombadil. <laughs> He's not a villain. <laughs> He's confusing. I've read. You can a, say the Barrow Whites. I read a really. Good I have also read a very and pretty dark, compelling yes. argument for Tom Bombadil being evil. <laughs> I think I've probably read the same thing. Yeah, it's been floating around for a while. If you know about Tom Bombadil, you've read The Fellowship of the Ring. But yeah, look up just just Google is Tom Bombadil evil and see what you find. There's some really interesting. Yeah. If, if you've read The Fellowship of the Ring and you're curious what we're talking about, just check it out. But or if you haven't read The Fellowship of the Ring and you're still curious. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not like gonna gatekeep it to just book readers, but <laughs> but you'll I think you'll appreciate it more if you've read the book because yeah. you'll know what the character is. But um, it's still fun to look up stuff either way. But yeah, so that's my Mount Rushmore. It's I, for those of you who don't know who Tom Bombadil is. Can we just give like a quick? Oh, okay, like, yeah, explanation? we'll do a quick little blurb. He is a an enigma wrapped in a forest. Yeah, <laughs> that the hobbits come across when they're trying to get to. Is that after Bree? No, it's before Bree because they don't have Aragorn with them. Correct. So, um. It's, it's not after included. the old forest. It's after the old forest, or it's part of the old forest. Yeah, it's like they try to the they forest. try to go through the old forest on their and own, and then the Tom Bombadil saves them because the willow tree tries to eat them with its roots. Yeah, and so Tom Bombadil and his wife, who's a water nymph, question mark river maiden. Thank you. Um, save them, take them back to their house. Tells them not to walk around at night. Like, seems kind of shady. Um. He sings a lot. He sings a lot. He's got he's yellow boots. And a blue jacket. He's very odd looking. He's kind of cartoonish. Um, which, like, if you if you look into, like, why Tolkien was writing The Fellowship of the Ring for his kids, and you know anything about, like, that part of it, Tom Bombadil was a, a character that he had made up for them when they were children mm-hmm. that was kind of nonsensical and funny and... He threw it in there as a bone for them, basically. Yeah. Um, but he's very odd. <laughs> and Tom Bombadil is completely lore-breaking. Yes. Because I think he claims to be older than Gandalf. Yeah, yeah. Which makes no sense. It makes That no would sense. have to make Tom Bombadil Iluvatar himself, which, which is another theory. <laughs> um, and he he um, and he sends them on their way and then has to save them again from the Barrow Whites. So they leave and then they they fall into like. But uh, maybe the Barrow Whites work for him because they it, seem to do what he says. Evil. These are all these are all theories. He lives in creepy woods. The Barrow Whites are terrifying. His They're wife's basically creepy. skeletons. Yeah. Of ghosts. Yeah. The, the, They're kind of zombies. Huh? They're kind of zombies. They're, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they're spooky. That's one of the spookier chapters in Fellowship yeah. of the Ring. But anyway. Side That's tangent. who Tom Bombadil is. Yeah, so he my... He sings a lot, a lot of poems. Oh, Tom Bombadillo, Tom Bombadillo. Yeah. He's fun. He's fun to read. Mm-hmm. So, the, uh... So, yeah, my Mount Rushmore is Darth Vader, Emperor Palpatine, Thanos, Sauron. That's what I'm going with. Good choices, man. Solid. So, yep. I had to go a little broader. That's fine. You had some really obscure... You had picks that I wouldn't have thought of, so that's... Thank you. Kudos. I also cheated. Good job. That's... I feel kind of bad that I picked an actor <laughs> to embody. Just Basil Rathbone. No, that's <laughs> bad valid. Guys, but that's a great choice. He played bad guys very well. Mm-hmm. You could say the same for Christopher Lee. He also played bad guys very compelling. That's true, like Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Christopher Mom. Lee, Count, Count Dooku. Dooku. Mm-hmm. Count Dooku is an underrated Star Wars villain. I just got to throw this out there because he, I kind of agree with everything that he says. <laughs> For the most part. Well, no, with like the political, <laughs> as far as like the political space of like mm. the Jedi, how the Jedi Council has been corrupted by politics. True story. Um, you know, he just definitely went off the rails with how he decided to try to solve that problem. But as far as his motivations, it's like, dude, I totally agree with you. It's kind of like when Barriss Afi goes off in the Clone Wars. Yeah. Because she doesn't trust the Jedi Council anymore Mm -hmm. and then makes some really bad choices. But you kind of understand why she did what she did. And yeah. And because of her, Ahsoka ends up kind of exiled and I don't want to get too spoilery. Yeah. This has been out for a long time, but you should, if you have, if you like star Wars and you haven't watched the clone wars because you're afraid that it's a kid's show, do not let that stop you. 
No, it's a great it show. It is so good. Yeah, and it's on Disney Plus. All of it. Mm-hmm. The whole shebang. And if you're interested in Grand Admiral Thrawn, um, you should watch the Rebel show because he's in there a lot, and it's also a good show. Especially it's since different. It's a little more kiddish. <laughs> yeah, a little but, more cartoony. Um, but it is also very good. But especially if you want to watch the live action Ahsoka show that's going to be coming out, <gasps> I'm so excited. You're probably going to want to watch Rebels at least because yeah, because you don't know who Admiral, she is otherwise. Yeah, I think Admiral Thrawn is going to be coming well, in. To that, I because she asked in the Mandalorian, "Where's Grand Admiral Thrawn?" And Thrawn is one of the big villains and rebels, so I think you're gonna want to yes. watch that before you watch the Ahsoka show. Yes, but, that's true. You would know who Ahsoka is if you've watched Clone Wars. Um, sorry, I said you wouldn't know her if you hadn't watched Rebels. That's not true. She's a huge part of Clone Wars. Um, she's there from the beginning of Clone Wars. Yeah. Yep. If you want to watch her show, you should watch both of those. Yeah, shows for sure. So you know what's going on with her, but. And you should also read her book. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot you read that. Yeah. And it was so I've good. Not. So I'll good. i do that sometime. Um, There's too many books. I can't read like five books at once like you. that one? Yeah. Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston was a very good book. It's set um, after Clone Wars before Rebels. Like it's in between those two. Cool. Um, Pretty cool. And it is so good. Very cool. So, and E.K. Johnston... Um, it's technically the first canon Star Wars novel writer that I have read. Oh, yeah. Because um, you've read all the EU stuff, but, <laughs> yeah. not, but not any of the actual canon right. stuff. Right, which some of those authors cross over. But, um, but you know, this was the first piece of canon, and I love it. I am so glad that she is writing for Star Wars. Thrawn also has his own book that is canon. I know, I need to read that. Yeah. I haven't yet. And he's written, I think that's written by a classic Legacies author. Nice. All Alrighty. of these legacy authors wrote other things too, yeah. outside of Star Wars. But... Yeah. So that's kind of a tangent. But yeah, all sorry. of these, talking of all these villains, you know, it's here's hard your, to... Here's your dash, dash of good guy. Ahsoka's yeah. a good guy. <laughs> it's hard to uh, talk about the villains without talking about the good guys that eventually thwart them in the end, or try to anyway. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, that is our, our uh, take on our favorite villains. Can and I interject who... one more thing about Thrawn? Good I'm grief. sorry. You can put. You can I'm like cut to it do back. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just okay. He was. He showed up in Legacies. Um. So I was familiar with him before he became part of canon. Yeah. And he, like, what I remember reading of him was so I liked him as a bad guy because part of his backstory was that he was that basically that the Empire was racist because all of the admirals are. Um, humanoid mm-hmm. men um, and Thrawn is a Chiss which is like a blue skinned red eyed alien and so he still basically, humanoid like biped s- yeah still humanoid but definitely an alien and so one of his big motivations is um, to prove that even though he's an alien he is just as capable and actually like far more capable than most of the Grand Admirals um, which I think Star Wars like has in general gone away from that concept that the Empire is just racist, <laughs> mm. but um, early on that was like a huge part of it, like in the legacies. Yeah. Um, which which I think that George Lucas would be okay with because the bad guys being racist is fine. Yeah. In fact, yes. <laughs> Historically. <laughs> yes. Historically, in real life, <laughs> bad guys. Yeah. Like if you're racist. That makes you a bad guy. <laughs> right. But I'm just saying, like, because in... Okay, so when you watch the original series, the only, like, aliens that show up are, like... They're not part of the main players, right? Like, the bad guys and all of their... Like, the Death Star is full of bipeds. Yeah. Presumably humans. <laughs> yeah. In suits. They don't have any aliens running I mean, you around. don't see a lot of Stormtrooper outfits of, like, weird, big-headed aliens or anything. Or Wookiees or yeah. anything like that. Um, but the Rebellion does have, like, you have the Mon Calamari and, like, all of these um, other aliens that are, like, part of the Rebellion. Um, and it's not, like, when you get into the prequels, then, like, the Separatists have aliens in them because it's, like, a political thing. And yeah. it changes it a little bit, but... Um, the legacy books that I was reading were pre prequel yeah. stuff. So this one, the empire was just racist. And Who did I, you pick for your favorite star Wars villain? Did you pick Thrawn? 
No, I picked I picked them all. Oh, oh but, right. But Thrawn is good. Yeah. Thrawn's up there. Thrawn can be your number two. Yeah. Or three or four. Yeah, I don't There's know. There's so many Star Wars villains. There's so many Star Wars villains. <laughs> and I didn't even touch Legacies, really, because it's so vast. Because mm-hmm. then you get into, like, the Yuzhan Vong, and they're, like, terrifying. and They're pretty gross. I couldn't name one of them for you, but they're scary. Yeah. <laughs> Fair. So, anyway, okay. All that to say, we like to talk about books and villains and good guys, and thanks for joining us on this. Some, yeah, sometimes villains are long adventure. <laughs> sometimes villains are almost more fun to talk about, just because you like, like I said before, you love to hate them. Yeah, and they're just, you know, they're one of the more entertaining things. I mean, they can be one of the more entertaining things to watch or read about. Well, what's a hero if you don't have a good villain? Yeah, I mean, they have to have an obstacle to overcome. The hero is only as good as that obstacle yep. that they overcame. So, yeah. For sure. Cool stuff. You had some interesting stuff on your list that I wasn't expecting. Thank you. So that's fun. Very fun. Thank you. Alrighty. So we will uh, talk to you next time. Make sure if you're keeping up with us with the lies of Locke Lamora, next time it'll be chapters four and five. Because we yes. did two and three. Yes. So it'll be chapters four and five. And we will talk about that next time. And I'm super excited. I might go home and read some more of it. Because I'm invested now. Good and I'm enjoying it. Yeah. Alrighty. So, in the meantime, go read something cool. And we'll talk at you next time. Bye. Later. <laughs>